Hello, hello. 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 We have only six people. So let's do it like this. We give people a few more minutes to join, but when we start, we tell them next time we'll start on time and then we actually start on time because I'm honestly somewhat tired of, of uh, always waiting. We only have 50 minutes anyway. And if we always wait five minutes, we are basically at 45 minutes. And all of this is way too interesting, so. Yeah, your hair is cut. Uh, yes, it is. Um, it is. But I that was the plan all along. Actually, I kept I kept the um, the mohawk and the colors longer, and the, the dyeing it the second time into different colors was also not planned. And coinciding with the lockdown uh, ending in in Germany or being lessened to to really nice levels. Um, I, I went completely bald, 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 bald. And it's super interesting for anyone who, like all, all of the people on this call have hair, so you all don't know this and I didn't know either. Um, your ears get so cold because all of the wind, which is all of a sudden not catching in your hair, it's absolutely fascinating. And your head gets hot in random bits and pieces and spots because your head is trying to to heat the brain and not have you die of cold. Which is all irrelevant, but I'm trying to fill those two minutes until the five after. And then we start and then going forward and I'll also send email. Actually, let me take an action item on this one. Um, we will simply start and not wait on people. Uh, in looking through, in looking through mail and things, I'm, I'm back from vacation now for two whole weeks. So I've ex I've excavated my inbox down to before before I left. Uh, it it seems we still haven't heard back from the TOC. Uh, we did order on the agenda. Did, did you hear anything? Well, well I, the thing which I heard. So yeah, okay, it's far after. So let's start. So first things first. Um, next time we'll start precisely on time, and I'll send this out. Uh, for, for future meetings too. So update on uh, on the TOC. Um, there was this TOC SIG call last week. Um, and we have a sponsor for, um, for both Thanos and Cortex incubation. She is called Katie Gamanji. I hope I pronounce it correctly. Um, and she took both of those due diligence items. Um, for TOC. I poked her uh, today um, and didn't get any update yet on, on, what, uh, on what she thinks about, uh, about the due diligence documents. Uh, but I don't, also don't have any timeline or anything. So for now, we just wait and see what happens. Um, yeah, but we have a TOC person who is looking at both Cortex and Thanos, which is already a lot more than we had a week ago. So that's nice. No. So this was this. And the other thing is the open source analytic um, platform thing. Uh, Bartek, do you want to start on yeah, this? Or? Yeah, definitely. I can essentially give some uh, quick, can you hear me? Yes. I can give some quick update, update what um, was done from the last meeting because um, at the very end of the last meeting, two weeks ago, we started this topic. Um, I actually kind of announced that uh, we are definitely looking at that as, as kind of Prometheus uh, community um, and kind of announced what are the um, communication channels and what we want to achieve. Let me reiterate, essentially, if you click on this link, there is a, an email thread and also kind of GitHub issue where um, everyone is welcome to give feedback on what analytic system you are using uh, in kind of, um, to be honest, analytic space, um, using different signals, to be honest, not only uh, 
kind of observability, but like signals from, from any data, data source. And uh, what we want to achieve here is to kind of integrate better the monitoring world where um, especially uh, as part of the kind of Prometheus project, we want to give uh, more ways of using those uh, monitoring data, for example, metrics in analytic uh, use cases, right? And um, so we are looking for, for kind of voice of the community uh, on what systems and what, AP, what APIs are the most needed and uh, what would kind of solve the most use cases. Um, so we are super happy to kind of create those APIs as, as maintainers, but uh, we need to have some kind of feedback <laughs> where to go because you know we are not uh, ex experts on, on this field. So this is the topic that we want to kind of uh, move, for, move on. So the, um, two weeks ago, we agreed that seek observability is definitely uh, a good spot for discussing those things because, well, there is no better SIG related to this topic. Uh, furthermore, we are touching observability data, which uh, in those days we are, you know, um, kind of retrieving and gathering for long term times, like, you know, years and, and you know, months of the data. So we want to make use of it. Um, so um, I guess we will be um, having um, some conversation in those, in those meetings and on our communication channels. Um, so I would I would love you to speak up even now if you have um, any feedback. Um, so there will be time for that. I would also maybe give some status what happened outside of the, our meetings uh, very quickly. Uh, first of all, we have Prometheus, Prometheus community meeting where we touched this um, very topic. I will um, kind of copy you the link in, where, where you can find the video. And um, so you can watch it fully, but essentially as part of this meeting, we, we talked um, uh, about this very topic. Um, it's kind of in a tweet, but um, it's available. And um, we spent some time and what we had here um, uh, in, this, in this meeting, we had like Rob from M3DB. Um, so kind of long-term storage metrics uh, system they shared what they are looking um, for in terms of kind of um, spiking this topic, how to integrate data metrics with analytic system. Um, and he mentioned that uh, they are planning to address um, some kind of Spark integration and Presto. So this is very kind of specific things that we can already try to uh, integrate with. So uh, you're welcome to check this video um, to, to, to kind of know the details. And um, and we also have lots of feedback on the um, kind of GitHub issue. Uh, I tried to summarize this topic um, here briefly, so you can kind of check this out. It's like a summary of what we know so far, what projects were mentioned, and uh, you know how they, um, how we can kind of solve it, um, solve integration from metrics to those um, to those. Uh, projects there, you know, apart from Spark and Presto, um, uh, ClickHouse was mentioned, uh, Druid, all sorts of um, timescale DB, so all sort all sort of systems, and and we are looking for the for the direction that will be you know the most useful for for the community. Um, on top of that, one more thing, um, Ozan, who I think is on this on this call, was super active, and 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 we found you know, a couple of cool, um, maybe not very popular project that are already integrating a Prometheus um, um, kind of storage format and, and, and kind of couple it with, um, I, I think, some kind of analytic API that you can connect with Spark. Um, Ozan, do you want to maybe give some quick TLDR summary of, of what's the latest of, uh, of, of your findings? Uh, hello, uh, uh, do you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Uh, uh, yes, uh, I, I am uh, recently uh, a little bit uh, in a research mode about the topic uh, and uh, focused off uh, metrics and uh, uh, maybe doing learning on that metrics data. Uh, but uh, uh, which every common using uh, ML algorithms are in uh, generally in Python. Uh, there is lots of frameworks, and uh, we uh, planning to use Spark jobs uh, on 
uh, our site uh, because of the uh, every uh, analytic team has uh, built in and they are currently using them. Uh, if we uh, can reuse the, this platform, it will be very good. Uh, so uh, I have focused to them. Uh, Spark integrations uh, uses some kind of uh, internal Java and also Scala uh, internals of the uh, libraries to connect that. And uh, there should be a extra effort to maintain every each Scala and uh, Spark release. Uh, some Elasticsearch, Cassandra, Couchbase uh, drivers are uh, common in this sense, I can say. Uh, but uh, a little uh, dream or uh, uh, very crazy idea, but uh, I see lots of uh, every Python uh, analytic or I think we lost Ozan. Yeah, seems like Let's I can see everyone's video move. But yeah, you know, in the meantime, once okay. he's back, like Good. we all you, yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we lost your last minute of so if you could. No. Yeah, we cannot hear you. So while we wait for him to return, uh, would it be useful for us to sort of brainstorm a list of scenarios uh, that would be enabled by having these systems? Um, I don't want to lead any witnesses, so I'll, 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 I'll speak last or later, but um, this is an active topic for at least my day job. I mean, we have, um, we have exactly this squarely on our sites for a variety of scenarios, but um, if we don't already have that curated yeah to, yeah you know, that would be amazing no wrong answer is just brainstorming starting place that might be worth a couple minutes what do you all think definitely so uh in the in this kind of issue i kind of we kind of gathered um the use cases maybe from from our point of view like from newbies who are not maybe using those <laughs> analyzing analyze analysis systems so analytic systems so obviously we can be wrong so definitely it's worth to have uh, maybe shared document google doc that we can uh, offline collaborate with so maybe let's have that an action item right so um i will share some document work and focus on requirements not necessarily about exact solution already right that makes sense to me I think you need to understand the use cases of where you want to end up um, to go beyond the, the immediately obvious um, approaches. Like on a very high level, you can obviously say we want to enable deeper analysis, but to answer what do we mean, what are the boundaries, runtime, blah, 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 blah. We probably need to agree on, or not even agree, but at least stake out a few common users and what actual needs do we solve? I, I, I can see the pot. If we, do we want to talk about this now? Is that what? Yeah, we, we can start. I think. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So one of the one of the more high value scenarios for for my team would be uh, to be able to, you know, build data sets and curate them and and expose them such that they are suitable for model training for anomaly detection particularly in our case with periodicity uh, uh, on the, you know, month or multi-month or even quarterly or yearly scale. Many of the commercial offerings today, like Datadog, for example, do uh, analysis of periodicity for anomaly detection on the one to two week maximum time horizon. Uh, 
uh, we we run a lot of machine learning and and, and uh, we serve a lot of models for real time auctions and other other fairly fairly real time uh, uh, things being in ad tech. So we'd like to apply some of that same methodology to you know the, the vast fire hose of data we have coming from not just infrastructure and various layers like Kubernetes and the various cloud hosted services we use, but also leveraging custom metrics that are exposed as Prometheus um, or open metrics formatted data. Uh, today, you know, we're, we're dumping that to Cortex, but we've explored, you know, everything from time scale to influx to lot, basically anything that can take a remote write input stream. Um, and so we haven't, we haven't solved this challenge yet, but that is one of our core scenarios so that we can, you know, like, for example, in the insurance market, uh, you know, health and health insurance in the US is an open enrollment thing, right? And it's usually in the fourth quarter of the year. So we will see huge spikes then. Uh, but in other domains like financial services or other places, you have fairly predictable ebbs and flows of traffic that dramatically change, particularly cloud native systems. Uh, so being able to have alerting that's not threshold based uh, and is not anomaly detection based on what happened like last Wednesday, but is, but is more about what happened last year at this time or last quarter at this time. But those are the, those are some core scenarios for us. Amazing. That, that totally makes sense. So let me put here also the thing that I, we gathered so far um, in our kind of, um, let's say, um, um, in our, let's say, organization. So first of all, and also from the perspective of kind of from cues, what is missing or in what sense, what is actually difficult to obtain, right, from, from it. So um, we were talking about kind of producing multidimensional reports from years of data, right? So um, very often you are, um, you want to have a nice visualization that is not real time and not for alerting, but actually to analyze that, you know, um, by humans, for example, right? Or, or, or to show some uh, characteristic um, and just print it right now for, for your uh, managers, for your I know, senior um, management. And this is something that is very painful in, in current kind of state of Prometheus because it, all the queries are, um, are very heavy in terms of um, cardinality. And currently Prometheus is focused on real time kind of response with low latency. This means that it's not easy. There is no kind of API that allows it um, maybe for like uh, kind of streamed um, slower um, API that will allow um, producing those reports, right? So this is kind of use case that we found problematic and that we want to solve with this analytic, analytic form. Um, the second thing is good discoverability of what dimensions we have available, right? So one thing is that we want to be able to fetch um, this data for machine learning for um, other use cases, but first we need to know what data we have. And in Prometheus, it's not that easy because the best knowledge you have if you are producing this data, right? If you, are, if you know what your application actually um, allows you um, exposes, what metrics are exposed, right? If you want to kind of discover those, then you are putting a heavy load and there's no very good APIs on that. Um, so, you know, something that, that this is um, trying to solve is, is discoverability of, of your data. Um, and allow joining data from multiple sources. Yes, um, there is definitely, you know, use case for having those reports or anomaly detection as you, as you said, that will combine not only metrics, but also logs and maybe also, you know, the data that you got from segment that, um, you know, from website and, and uh, what users are accessing actually. So um, those are further use cases that we could see, but definitely, um, yeah, let's, let's, let's gather um, most of them. I could speak to two other scenarios, but again, there's a lot of people on the call and I don't, I don't want to hog airtime. So, um, yeah, I else? also just want to make one note, so everyone is explicitly aware of this, that we already have different use cases in as much as Matt was talking about shipping data off and doing analysis somewhere else, whereas Bartik was talking about doing it within the observability stack, which is already a huge difference. 
And with that, I'm going to show up and require someone who's not Fartek, Matt or me to, to, to pipe up and voice an opinion, please. We only bite if you don't talk. If you talk, we don't bite. Your cup goes away in the magic background thingy. No one? No one has any opinion on this? I mean, on some level, I like to keep things small and composable. So shoving a whole bunch of data analytics stuff into an observability stack kind of feels like creating a massive monolith instead of a bunch of little tools that compose to do something nice. But that doesn't mean you can't have a marketing umbrella that's got a bunch of smaller projects underneath it that go and fit together nicely. Just as a, a, a thought, you can also have something in the middle where you basically enable it, like enable composability, for example, something, but we're again very deep in Prometheus land. If Prometheus had a batch API versus an interactive API, where you can put requests, which basically they can return in an hour or in a day, I don't care. I just care about this happening at some point. Um, and this is basically what all, what, what all mainframes grew large with this distinction between interactive database access and batch database access. And this simple split enabled insanely powerful use cases. So for example, this is something which an observability engine could offer and then try and, and just interface with other things nicely, like for example, R or what, whatever. And I think that's, uh, I'm 100% behind that. I think that the really interesting story is the APIs that enable the external use cases. So instead of going and shoving a, you know, Jupyter notebook into Prometheus, Lord help us, uh, building an awesome API that goes and enables those new types of workloads is definitely 100% the Unix philosophy composability community play. Yeah, I think at least for, for time series metrics, I think remote read and remote write are fairly brilliant. I think there's a, a need for some backfilling. And uh, I've talked with um, uh, some, of, some of the folks here already about this in the past, but um, we're looking acutely at maybe even writing it ourselves or, or doing it in the context of the Prometheus community, but um, a, a mirroring proxy for remote write um, would allow us to have our existing observability stack in place where, you know, from all sorts of places, both Kubernetes and not, uh, we have uh, metrics, you know, headed to a centralized backend. And if we could tee those off, very easily and just replicate just duplicate all of that to go to other systems like perhaps timescale or clickhouse or whatever um, that would let us kind of not muddy the observability stack with this analytic stuff but would still make it very simple to, to move and and in the same spirit you know one of the things that i have the least amount of like concrete plans about how we're going to achieve it is the same with trace data in particular we have a lot of our services, uh, you know, that we're universally instrumenting with open telemetry, uh, the Linkerd mesh we're using also can export headers as well. Um, and, and in those spans, many of our development teams are finding it useful to put additional metadata like, you know, log messages or stack trace, you know, failure things, unique identifiers. So we have this whole bunch of data that's not Prometheus for which I don't have the same set of APIs today to handle across different trace backends. So we're sending everything to Jaeger, right? But um, how do I get at all that in a good way? And how do I use other backends or, or, or whatever to, to bring that trace data into scope for analysis? Uh, I really love the mirroring idea because going back to the segment comments from earlier, like that's what I use segment for is literally just mirroring and splitting out all my analytics data into a bunch of different backends, whether it's Google Analytics or big query or whatever. And like, it's my favorite tool on earth specifically for that reason, because there's a whole bunch of different tools that do a bunch of different things. I want a single stream that comes in and then splits it out into other backends that I can slice and dice different ways. Is this a SAS hosted thing? Yeah. I think there's a, a like segment knockoff that's uh, open source. 
There's a lot of uh, competitors to Segment. I've definitely used it. It's a pretty cool product. Yeah. I think somebody touched on it before and again, I, I should be less afraid about talking, I suppose, to set an example. But, um, you know, one of the reasons why we want to find a way to do this with open source tooling is primarily so we can run it ourselves. Uh, we handle a lot of PII and EPHI. Uh, and so many SaaS tools we can use, but it requires a fairly, you know, FedRAMP certifications and just a lot of, you know, SOC 2 compliance, auditing. It, it's a long, it's a, it's a heavy lift operationally to use some of these SaaS tools because the data needs to stay within our own VPCs and networks. So from a requirements perspective, I think at least for, for our business, self-hosted is, is a pretty important component. Uh, and, and when we get into the volume, you know, we did some tests with, you know, hey, Linkerd, hey, service mesh, give me everything you can. Uh, it's, you know, we actually have a whole data platform team and a data analytics team and, and just it very quickly dwarfs even that in terms of total data. Is there anything in the CNCF umbrella around reasoning on trace data that folks have found useful or are, you know, do I have a knowledge gap about what I could just be using or is there an actual gap in projects? Well, if you have traces, you can, you can actually send them to Elasticsearch, for instance, and do the analytics there, uh, but it's very, uh, it's not, obvious out of the box that you actually, you need to take care of that in the back end. We had exactly the same question internally. We generate a lot of traces, a lot of metrics, and how do we do analysis on that? Right now, it's a bit, it's not easily discoverable, basically. Yeah, I, I think we've identified, at least for our roadmap, kind of two buckets in this general topic. One, um, correlation of trace logs is traces, logs, and metrics for operational use cases, uh, you know, like what's going wrong, what went splat, or iterative development use cases. And for that, we've been using uh, Grafana, uh, you know, uh, to stitch together logs, traces, and, and metrics, and, and we expect that to be a nice fit. But on the analytics side, um, you know, to, to dive deeper in, I think there's a lot of opportunity. Does anyone know of, of projects w that w might help fill this gap, or should we at least take an action to report up to the TOC that this is one domain that is ripe for new projects to join the CNCF? I think Yager is probably the project that does most from, from the open source side. I think the rest is all in, in the commercial part project space where people are really doing the analytics on top. And projects like open to them, we also try to focus really on the data collection, but not the processing and not the analytics part. But the, I think that the biggest, the biggest part of analytics is definitely Jaeger, especially what the Jaeger project has done, done recently. Um, I mean, there are direct questions that obviously come up there uh, because do you have even like a a uniformly agreed data model how you store things? Like you mentioned, like the people use log messages part of traces. Uh, this is what we started telling people like 10, 10 years ago not to do uh, because it's highly inefficient from a processing part later on on the back end, and you want to split up these two data sources and just link them together via IDs. Because usually a trace processing needs to be even higher performance than your than your log processing. So I'm, I'm not sure what I'm, I'm helping here and I'm following the discussion. That's why I was like listening in here uh, for most of the time. But if you want to combine these different data sources, I think that's that's really what you need. You need to agree on how data is labeled, that you can query it across multiple data sources. And on, on the other topic uh, that you mentioned before, like about processing and input output. I personally like to have like one source of data or like one stream of data processing into different tools. I just see this getting harder and harder the more data you're consuming. 
And if you have like massively large systems, just reading the data again after you have stored it becomes more and more of an issue. This is also like a lot of the, the work that I'm focusing on right now. How do I not have to read or how can I reduce the amount of data I have to read as much again as possible? So if you say on one day produce 200 or like 20 terabytes of data and just reaming it to five tools and storing it in five tools, this 20 terabytes became 100 terabytes. And if you even add more tools, you can also store um, data again and not just the results uh, of the processing. It just becomes more and more. So that's why if you wanted to look into something, you would look more into a stream data processing model and ensure that data can easily be processed in a stream data processing uh, type of approach. Obviously, a lot of people are using Kafka uh, for, for these kind of scenarios. Um, but this is, I'm just not sure whether I'm off topic right now or I'm part of this discussion. No. I just wanted to. I personally think it's on topic if we're talking about, you know, traces being part of this observability data that, that, that's cogent directly. What, what, <laughs> what we've been looking at uh, in our group um, is, we'll, yes, we'll, we'll be using likely Kafka to actually shovel things around, but uh, in particular tail-based sampling with the open telemetry collector and seeing what we can do to uh, much like fluent bit moves, processing of logs and tokenization and some of the compute cost out to the edge near where the logs are being transmitted so that you know you don't you don't have all that stuff on the wire necessarily or you can reduce the, the raw volume. Um, we're looking at how can you we've been considering rather how can we you know do as much as possible uh, where we're collecting all traces but you know, at the point where we're collecting them, we're, 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 we're calling the things we don't care about. Uh, so programming models to do stream processing at, at, at that edge locations where, where the services are, you know, in cluster or on a virtual machine, whatever, before we store all that is, is we, we think might be the best approach. Yeah, I think we are touching exactly this topic on there are two ways. Either you move everything, convert everything to the tools that target format, or we have some way of aggregating and stream those data um, and just fetch what you need from the various data sources. And this is, uh, yeah, just just yeah. nicer because you don't reproduce data, but yeah. I think one actionable thing that we could, that like anyone on this call could start working on, maybe we just make a ticket for it or a task for it and see who, who is interested is, but you know, on this very topic, like I have active questions now that I don't see easy answers to without just trying it around Jaeger's scalability. Like what happens if I take blank amount of data and throw it into a Jaeger backend at, and I just keep putting data, at what point does it fall over and not become usable or should I run lots of little ones? You know, and so much like we're psyched about Cortex because it provides this centralized, fairly cheap way to store lots of time series data um, you know, and make it queryable. You know, all the things the Cortex does, we, I kind of want something similar for Jaeger, or for, for trace data, and I don't, I don't right now know what that is. So in scope for the city yeah, yeah. would be like making some case studies and just taking some base measurements so that we'd say like in the year 2020, you know, at, in July, were I to put this much data in, this is what the performance would be. Or, yeah, there, or there are, I don't know what the right approach to it is, but. There are definitely good discussions in the Yager team how to scale it more. Uh, there was a recent spike on Badger, Badger, um, I think database, uh, and there are much, much more um, what's going on. But I think this doesn't solve like analytics uh, kind of problem right now. It's just another maybe more cardin card high cardinality kind of database and, and the question, can we scale it? But, but still we, just another data, right? And and I think we should have this topic: how to scale Jaeger and 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 and. Uh, but I think that might be, um, yeah, something we can pull. You know, Jaeger team as well here, and definitely talk about that and help them scale because they they, they need some help. Um, but um, yeah, yeah, I guess I misspoke. I don't, I don't mean how to make Jaeger scale. I mean what is a suitable, durable store for trace data that could be used for analytics purposes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense. Like, so it's more, it's less of a Jaeger thing and more of a, 
like we have remote read, remote write, right? And I can have different backends. What that 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 to me seems like a gap. But I, I'm that, probably... sound, that sounds like a valid use case, right? We would like to have a tool that maybe uh, compose the data from both Prometheus and Jaeger, and something that will uh, some system that will allow to do that. It's actually a good verification for 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 this topic, right? For this uh, spike we are doing. Yeah, good point. Yeah. On the previous topic, uh, if, yeah, good, you're still here. Uh, I, I, on the stream processing, um, are you were you saying this is something that you're considering, or my audio got garbled when I when you were talking? Uh, is there projects or are there APIs already that could be suitable here, or that could be applied to doing stream processing on? Well, te technically, everything you do with trace data will be stream processing because you get in a stream, you just have to merge a lot of data together. That's how you ideally do it at scale. And also, when you, uh, when you we, we did it before when we exported data, it was also stream based because you need high performance output. Otherwise, just the amount of data drives you crazy. But it is it, trace data processing to big sense is a mixture. It, 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 and maybe that makes it so hard to obviously to tackle because it's a mixture of uh, stream data processing. If you, for example, need to calculate metrics from that stream of traces that you get in there, like service response time, if you want to collect them on, an, on a per uh, trace level, uh, which you obviously don't have to do if you have metrics for, uh, for, for response times, but if you want to slice and dice them. And then it's like really this, high cardinality database type of queries that you run against these data. But even there, we found that stream data processing solves a lot of issues. Like we analyze data, for example, for problem patterns as we are collecting the data and not later on. I mean, my personal opinion is if you do good data analysis on trace data, you reduce the amount of use cases where you have to do a lot of real-time queries on that data. Because that the bigger work right now goes into aggregation of, of traces. It's kind of interesting to watch. And we also have Jonah here who's working in this space for a yeah, while it was, as well. It's, yeah. We started all with single traces until to the point where we realized that looking at single traces is nice for a developer to understand what the code does or for debugging intermittent errors. But reasonably large systems just have too many traces and similarity and outlier analysis of traces, which eventually are graph-based data structures, is, is something that you're usually looking for. The individual parts you rarely look at because it's just too many. So one of, one of the things that Jaeger is missing is like the ability to create metrics from traces in that, in that real-time way, uh, which is definitely something we're looking to contribute back into the project. And then the idea would be to expose those to be scraped by something like Prometheus, where you could then start to do trending and other types of analysis of the trace data that's being collected. And ultimately, you could actually detect a lot of problems just based on metrics versus having to actually analyze all the traces. Because with Jaeger, it just hammers the back end and it becomes really difficult with Elasticsearch to do these types of things at scale. This is exactly what we're dealing with in our system um, as our customers continue to send more trace data you know, to our back end. Um, and uh, it's definitely kind of a disconnect between traces and metrics that I'm seeing in the community. So the same approach is what what one of the reasons why we've chosen Loki uh, for some of our log aggregation scenarios, in particular Promtail, which is a, a daemon set that runs in a Kubernetes context anyway, uh, entails all the logs. Uh, it it can look for things and have log derived metrics uh, that are exposed as a Prometheus endpoint that can then be scraped by the same in cluster Prometheus to get uh, exactly the same thing to get like frequencies and various. Um, custom processing, uh, it, it also does it on the server side in a slightly yeah. different way, which is which is a differentiator actually, because you can do log derived metrics for things that you didn't set up ahead of time to make metrics for, but different, different topic for different day. Um, I mean, I think it's a different argument. I mean, I believe that 
logs still have a lot of value if they're indexed and Loki doesn't do indexing. So yeah, uh, we, unless you think of all this. Really. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, I, I, I'm sorry. You're, you're absolutely right. I, I didn't mean to say it was holistically everything. It's, it's one prong of, 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 a, of an approach, but we're also doing some indexing on targeted workloads as well. Um, okay. um, but um, my point was that the, the notion of at the point of collection deriving time series metrics because it's simpler sometimes and more expedient to reason on the time series than it is to plow through the full trace data or plow through the full log data. Um, it's, a, it's a common approach. And you also have to do it sometimes. Like if you want to calculate metrics across different instances, you have to aggregate them somewhere again. You could argue you're also doing it based on, um, um, on metrics data. I think this, this, this discussion we're having right now, per se, what to use for what, has, is one that has been going on for over 10 years in the monitoring community. Yep. And just telling people what to do is a, uh, is a good idea. Like what to use metrics for, what to do with traces, what to not do with traces. Like if the only thing I want is a response time for a service, sending trace data that I then use to calculate the metric to then do alerting might not be the best move at all. Might not be reliable, essentially, yeah. Yeah, I guess that's why I wanted to focus on scenarios. I've, I've been holding off, but I could just really quickly just bounce through two additional scenarios that we might want to add to the list. And I'm curious if other people have these same ones. Uh, one is correlation of infrastructure metrics with cost. Uh, so, you know, most cloud, cloud, cloud providers that we use, you know, give you costing information and being able to correlate those two things. Um, there's two others that we had uh, we're, when looking at horizontal versus vertical uh, pod auto scaling, um, you know that that's a place where uh, we would like to run experiments, capture the impact, particularly for legacy workloads that were inherited, <laughs> shall we say, that aren't completely understood, but have you know good test collateral, or we can filter some traffic to to run experiments. You know when when does it make more sense to to scale vertically versus horizontally and and just capturing the metrics for all of that and then correlating it with what the auto scaler did uh, can provide you know the ability to create models to game out how we should better utilize um, hardware and then correlating all that back to, to, to cost um, those are those are two scenarios at least that um, are ways we internally at everquote might want to use um, analytics on derivatively. Uh, and then yeah. the, the third I'll mention is that we're, we've launched internally to brag a little. <laughs> it's actually quite simple, just a, a deploy tracker service. So, so some of our CI and CD when it makes deploys or when a lot of hand deploys that aren't automated yet are made, um, we've got that going to a backend service, which is then making in our case Grafana annotations and also surfacing that via um, a Prometheus aggregation push gateway. Um, time series metrics out of our deploys. So we can correlate like deploys to anomalies or errors or whatever happening, good or bad in our infrastructure. And that's another thing where there's so much data and so many different points of measurement and so many different services that applying a more systemic analytical approach that, that can make it less, you know, needle and haystack kind of traditional debugging uh, is a scenario we'd like. This is exactly, it's exactly something we've considered. Uh, basically, when, when we're doing a deploy, you want to look at the trace data to see exactly what changed. If we can generate metrics out of there, then we have immediately insights into, I don't know, maybe this span took 10% longer suddenly because we did this deployment. And we can correlate that also to response time on a metric and maybe look at some logging at the same time. So aggregating all that is, is kind of really hard right now because you have to integrate with lots of different systems. And, and yeah, with traces indeed, you don't have really good tools right now to, to do that so that can handle the load and scale well. But yeah, one of the things you said was you wondered if others were kind of heading in the same direction, definitely. I mean, we've, we've exactly those use case right now. Yeah, I think I want to kind of bump this thread because we are actually thinking about that in, in uh, kind of Prometheus community uh, because uh, with the Loki and, and Jager, we are kind of collaborating together and we are already having some POC of solutions that, for example, 
um, ha are having a strong links between this data. So you are still pushing, you know, um, gathering metrics. You are still pushing logs like you used to. You're still pushing traces. However, you, there is a sort of kind of way where you only index um, once because this kind of you have actually the same resources uh, in both of those signals, right? Um, so you can totally have the same index that will give you, you know, the, 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 the certain application, for example. So that's already reducing um, a lot of um, space and, and complexity and, and, and resources that you have to uh, uh, use for, for those signals, right? So for example, you have um, um, Prometheus are giving exemplars that um, can hold trace IDs for the, for example, slower, um, some interesting thing that happened during uh, observation of latency of this request, for example. So then you can navigate to trace um, and, and, and have traces. And the same, you can share the trace ID and the request ID for the logging. So you can jump from that uh, between logging and tracing. And if you would be, and kind of work together in a way that those databases will share some kind of information, for example, indexes, um, which are very heavy, there is a huge win here. So um, we are trying to, to go through this because you really need to gather metrics and push metrics, right? As we agreed for the, for the different purposes, like for alerting, you have to have reliable real-time metrics. Um, for traces, you are fine with the kind of slower latency for, um, for, for kind of met trace availability. Um, so there, are, yeah, it's hard to have just one solution and just, use traces and forget about anything. However, we want to make sure uh, with this observability um, group as well that uh, we can collaborate together and have uniform solution. Yeah, and then that's what we care for, yeah. What's also interesting is, you know, you mentioned coordinate everything and if you use the elastic stack completely, and I'm in no way like trying to sell it or anything, but you can actually already do that, but you have to be completely locked in in that system. It would be nice to be able to use now the CNCF projects in the same way that you can correlate all those things all together uh, and still keep you know, the, the cloud native kind of uh, way of working. Exactly. Yeah. This is this has been awesome. I'm just looking at the clock. And we have I think we have two minutes left. Um, uh, uh, Richard, what do you think next steps are? I mean, I, I don't want to. I don't want to. I think I would like to see this move forward and, and become actionable things that we can fan out to. Like so I think one uh, one thing which we should be doing is is start collating use cases. Um, start collating use cases um, in a shared document, ideally. If you want, I can send one one around without any restrictions, so everyone can just toss stuff in. And ideally, we we'll maybe let this sit for a week or so to to have a brainstorming session and then from there try and distill more and more um, generalized use cases out of this. Um, the other thing, um, CNCF TOC asked us to, to uh, select a third chair with a little bit more view on diversity. So if any one of you have suggestions, um, highly appreciate it. Because initially we did look around and didn't really find a lot. But we'll, we'll restart that effort. So if you have anyone, let us know. Yeah. I think those are the two. Anyone, is anyone interested in working on sort of a case, a set of case studies? Maybe not on what tools to use, but just like either working with, either reaching out to projects like Jaeger and Open Telemetry and seeing what they have in terms of, again, like I'm, I'm tactically looking, I'm going to deploy Jaeger for example, or I'm going to deploy whatever, um, just raw sizing it. It seems like a, you know, figure it out as you go. And I'd like to just pre-provision what's needed. So th there might be some low hanging fruit there for new, new, new contributors and new members of the SIG. I would, I would encourage us all to make um, suggestions either in Slack or in GitHub. Like I, would, I would like to carry a backlog much larger than the folks on this call can deal with so that we can say to new potential SIG members, Hey, come join us. This is all shovel ready. We just, if you're interested in this stuff, you can contribute and here's how. So um, perhaps that's a separate brainstorm and I'll, I can follow up with something on the list. I think we can, we can do that collaboratively kind of in, together, right? So 
um, I'm happy to set up this document because kind of started this uh, this topic and um, kind of announce it so everyone can reach the the closed project they are working on and 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 give an input on the case studies and requirements. Right, this is our goal for now. And use cases, or didn't I catch you saying use cases? Because I think from for the sake, like I think case studies are valuable, but somewhat orthogonal in as much as either someone has something working, which they're able and willing to to talk about, but this is largely disconnected from us coming to an agreement of what use cases to cover, or what use cases are considered yes. within. Yes, they're totally orthogonal. I just we had mentioned them in line, and I just wanted to call them out as potential next steps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know this was going, more going to Bartek, who, who seemed to mix the two, but uh, yeah. Awesome. Okay. Then I think that's it. And see you in two weeks. Yeah. And earlier, ideally, we should really, and I, I know I keep saying this, but we should try and move more work into, into text and use this more for open discussion. But I liked the open discussion today. That was pretty good. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, Thank maybe you. I'm going to try to think of a joke involving observability for next time. Yes, please. I'll put the challenge out because I'm not a very funny person. So. Uh, let's add action item on doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bye. Thanks.